Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can set up input masks to dictate how data is entered into selected fields. Access makes an easy wizard called the Input Mask Wizard that allows you to apply input masks to text and datetime fields. To use this, select the field in the table design grid to which you wish to apply an input mask. Click into the Input Mask property in the Field Properties section and then click the Expression Builder button that appears at the far right end of the property box. It's the one with the ellipsis symbol on it, the little dot dot dot. That, when clicked, will launch the Input Mask Wizard. The wizard will then show some of the most common input masks used for a field. You can select whichever input mask you would like. Remember, the Format property could conflict with the Input Mask property if they're in opposition, which can sometimes happen with date time fields. So, for example, if you had had a date time format, such as long date for the format, and yet you had a short date input mask, the two would be in opposition. You would never be able to actually input data into the row. So make sure that if you do set the format, the input mat mask will actually match it. But here you can see they give you ones for phone numbers, social securities, zip codes, extensions, passwords. In this one, we're going to choose a zip code and click Next. It shows us the input mask. Down below, we have to select the placeholder character that will be replaced as we input data in the field. You can choose the double quotes to actually use a literal space versus any actual placeholder character. And then click Next. You have to choose whether you want to store the data with the symbols in the mask, like this, including the hyphen, or without the symbols in the mask, like this, with no hyphen. And that's how it will store it. It will always display it using the input mask. But if you have to do substring replacements on fields, you'll want to know how the data is actually stored. And so that is an important choice. Then click Next. And at that point, you're done, so click Finish. You can see that it'll go through and it'll create the input mask property for you. If you'd like more information about it, you can always hit F1 on the keyboard and read the help file on creating input masks. They're not too incredibly difficult, and you may have used them before in Excel. They're certainly very handy for restricting how data is entered into a field. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.